come to the time of the word of God, we are talking about God as spirit. And we are talking about spirit to spirit. John chapter 4, verse 24. This is our first scripture for today, as it was last week. From there, God will take us to where we are going to. I want you to understand this from your spirit. God. Is spirit. God is spirit. And those who will worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God is spirit. If you look at that scripture, just pay attention to that scripture. You will notice that the word spirit in the first line of that text, the word S is uppercase. What we can call capital letter is uppercase. So spirit here is definitive. Is spirit in the sense of divinity. Is spirit in the sense of God. And if you look at the second word, spirit, in the third line of that scripture, you will see spirit. And the word S is similar in size, in case, with the first one. So those who will worship him will worship him in what? Spirit. And this spirit is not a spirit with lowercase s or what you will call if it is not capital letter. What is, what is the other one? Okay, small. Okay. So the lowercase letter or small s. So those who will worship God because God is spirit, those who will worship him, they have to worship him where? In spirit. So we have been trying to understand what it actually means to have relationship with God before we begin to talk about the power of relationship because the problem we have in church is that there are so many people who sit down and they don't know who they are, who God, say, who God says they are. In the first assembly, something very deep is happening. We are talking about the status of the firstborn, and today we made it very clear that when we talk about the firstborn, his spirit, his life, and his mind, understanding. So until you know, until you know, the reason Jesus came, let me just make this very clear. Jesus could have come and that infant will have died for us. He had everything. When he was one year old, as blood, because he needed to shed the blood for the expiation, to expiate, to cover, to atone, to bring appeasement, to bring, to bring recovery of relation, to expiate, to take away the sin of the world. He was the Lamb of God before the foundation of the world. The scripture says the blood, the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb that was slain from the very foundation of the world. So Jesus had always been the Lamb that was revealed in time. So when in John chapter 1 verse 29, John saw him the next day and said, oh, see the Lamb of God. See the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ will have died as the Lamb of God at the age of one. Jesus Christ will have died as the Lamb of God at the age of three. He could have died at the month of three months old. By the time Herod was looking for Jesus to kill him, Jesus could have died that time and would still be the Lamb of God. But do you know the, the, the reason why he wouldn't die that time? If he died that time, he would still die as the Lamb of God, but he would not profit you. If he died that time, he would die as the Lamb of God. The blood he will have shed will have been the blood 
of the only Son of God, the pure atoning blood of the Son of God to wash away the sin. But you know what? He will not wash away your sin. He will not wash away my sin. So why did he live till he was about 30 and he had a very brief ministry for three years? He came to teach. To give understanding into who he came as and what he was to do. So his words, the understanding we have of his word is what makes his blood salvation to me. The blood in itself, as powerful as it is, that blood is incapable of saving anybody. Without knowledge of what the blood is about. So, until you know who you are, you cannot manifest who you are in Christ. Write it down. Until you know who you are in Christ. Until you know who you are in God, you cannot manifest who you are. It is what you know that you talk. It is what you know that you work. It is what you know that you become. It is what you know that you manifest. It is what you know that you display. It is what you know that you bring forth, that you bring about. What you don't know, you cannot bring about. You cannot manifest. You cannot generate. And you cannot bring about the proof and the celebration of it. So it's so important this, this season of talking about spirits is so that you can come to the place of comfortably having a basic idea of your identity. Say identity. What makes an American different from a, a Canadian is identity. What makes a Nigerian different from a Nigerian, Niger, Nigerian, Nigerian, and Nigerian. The difference is in what? Identity. It is your identity that puts you in certain places. When you get to some airports in Nigeria or in the world, you get to an international airport, you arrive, and at your arrival, your identity specifies how you are treated. Your identity from the time of arrival is not your color. In some places, your color. Your identity will now have to come and explain to you. But in most places, it's just your identity. So you are from so, so, so country. Um, that is how you are treated. You are from so, 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 so country. That is how you are treated. So then you have spiritual identity by which the things of life treat you accordingly. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Look at me, look at me, look at me. I say you have spiritual identity by which things treat you accordingly. An American takes a card that we call international passport and travels to almost everywhere on earth unchecked. Just buys a ticket, makes arrangements for traveling, and then boards flight and arrives anywhere. What happens? Identity. Identity. How much do you, do you even know there is a spiritual identity? Your spiritual identity has nothing to do with your face, has nothing to do with your color, has nothing to do with your height, has nothing to do with your village, your community, your relationship with those in government or politics or whatever. Spiritual identity has nothing to do with your Americanness, or that you're, you, are, you were born in the UK, that you are a subject, or whatever. Your spiritual identity is relevant in spiritual realms. And they have huge implication in physical realms. Your spiritual identity is accessed spiritually. It holds you spiritually, or passes you spiritually. 
And whether it holds you spiritually or passes you spiritually, it affects your life physically. Whether it holds you spiritually or passes you spiritually, what happens is that it affects your life physically. Am I communicating? Yeah. Because spiritual place is where things happen. And the physical place is where things are reported. So when we report, when we say somebody is dead, it happens spiritually, but it's reported physically. When we say somebody is born, it happens spiritually, and it's reported where? Physically. When Jesus Christ was born, spiritually, there was an announcement. He said, we saw his stars. And we have come. Reported spiritually because it took place as a spiritual reality. Your shame is first of all what happens spiritually. And it's reported physically. So you can be quarreling with somebody. Oh, you are responsible for my trouble. The scriptures say we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Flesh and blood is weird things that have happened spiritually are reported. A neighbor may be somebody through whom your delay is reported. Your boss may be somebody through whom your delay is reported. Because of your boss, you say, I have not been promoted. Ask my boss. I have asked him, what have I done wrong? This is a spiritual thing that is being reported by a man physically. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services, Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for Word Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibum State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling, and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.